All right, so on the bench today we have a Westinghouse. I think this is a model 474T as in Tango 5. I believe this is from around 1954, 55, somewhere in there. Um, this was sent in for repair. The guy, um, he uh, found this in a barn. I guess it had belonged to, I think his grandmother, I believe is what he said. And it had been sitting in a barn. Um, his grandmother had bought it new. And I guess it got stored in the barn. The barn started, um, I guess the barn had some roof leaks that got damaged and uh, messed up some components in it. So uh, uh, the IF cans being one of them is what it was explained to me. And so he bought a junker radio and put in some new IF cans and then he was having some problems with the couplet in it which is a real early integrated circuit design they come out with in the 1950s for these radios that you know it's basically looks like a big old square uh, disc capacitor it's about all I can explain it and it's got a couple of legs come off of it a lot of people watching know what I'm talking about but anyway he was having a problem with the couplet so the couplet went bad and so this is the couplet on our schematic. He sent in the schematic, by the way, which is a Sam's photo fact. Glad he sent that in because my uh, my uh, schematic uh, files that I have, I didn't have this particular model on there. But of course, it's just a regular old five tube radio. Not a whole lot to this, um, and I'm suspecting that probably uh something with the work on the couplet is what's wrong with it he said basically it was playing good when he got done with you know doing the couplet and said that the signal faded out and hadn't worked right ever since so he said he's tried about everything he knew to to fix it so he's sending in and i'm gonna take a look at it and see if we can get it going He's removed the clock in it, as you can see. Um, apparently that got damaged, I guess, and got some water damage. So he removed it to do some restoration work on it. So he just sent in the radio, which is fine. It's pretty much just wired it together with these wires here. So we're just dealing with the radio. He sent me some pictures of it. And this ferrite bar antenna was pretty degraded by, looks like it's, suffered some water damage itself so it's, i'm thinking that could be part of where our problem is or it could be uh could be some of the the couplet work he did or could be anything so basically we'll just you know go ahead and take it out of the cabinet and see what's going on with it and you just remove those two screws right there from those two slots two quarter inch screws and Pull the knobs off the front and the chassis will slide right out. Alright, we're going to have to record this one on my phone. The other camera died. And so I don't guess we're going to be able to use that camera again. I had that camera for four or five years and it just decided it wasn't going to work anymore. And so that's all there is to it. So I'm going to try to link these videos together. But anyway, um, we got the chassis out this little plastic cover down here it comes off the bottom there and and set that aside so this is our underside of our chassis he's recapped this thing and he said he like i said before in the other clip if if it even survived that uh he rebuilt the couplet and i suspect that some of that down there some of those components, newer components down there is what he did to it. So we'll have to see. But let me uh, plug this thing in and see what it's doing. <coughs> All right, we're warming up here. Yeah, that ferrite bar, that thing looks pretty rough. I'm hearing a hum from the speaker. I hear a signal coming in. 
see if I can stick this knob back on here. I heard a signal a second ago. Should pick up that station up the street. Some at least. Hold on, let me see if I can clip in an antenna. See if I can get anything with an antenna, a separate antenna. I can clip that in there. Of course, the wire is going to get pinched. Yeah, I'm not getting anything now. I have a feeling it's probably something to do with that wire. With that... Uh, ferrite bar antenna i think i got a ferrite bar antenna somewhere around here let me see if i got one Ferrite bar here that i <clears throat> took out of the junk radio i don't i got it wrapped on there but i'm not really still not hearing anything so <clears throat> i think we need to we need to get out the signal tracer and see what's going on with this thing funky going on with this radio I'm trying to figure it out because when I hook my signal tracer up to it, I get nothing but a hum everywhere. So there's some kind of power supply issue or something going on. So when I come down here on this, um, when I come down here on this uh, 35W4, uh, we've got this here coming off of a 470 ohm. 470k resistor here with some caps and stuff hooked to it but listen see if i can get the camera up close enough to it for you to hear when i when i touch now i've got my meter hooked up this is the ground side because i can't hold both probes and the phone at the same time so we got the ground side of the meter hooked up to the floating ground in here and listen to what happens it's dead right now. Well, as soon as I touch that wire, it plays. Listen to it. It's fading out. <laughs> I think that's what he was talking about. Yeah, so something's not right in here. So we're going to have to... See? All right, it's fading out. I ain't never seen this problem before. <laughs> Here we go again. Let's touch it again. It's not loud, but it's every time you touch it, it's something in the meter. When I touch this, you know, lead, at, uh, you know, this, when, when I, when it goes through the meter to ground, there must be enough capacitance or something to allow <laughs> it to work for a second. And then, and then it fades out. So we got something wrong somewhere over in here. This is, this is strange. Here with this couplet here is, uh, <clears throat> once I got it out of the radio, and started looking at the schematic here. Let's see if I can show this here. Here's our couplet here. We have um well it says 250 mmf which is micro microfarad which is not used anymore. It's picofarad and so that would be total 
I'm assuming they're referring to the two uh, capacitors there in that circuit there, D and E. Okay, so you're going to have to split that value in half, that 250 picofarad. So we're talking about a, a 125 here and a 125 here. Well, uh, what we have here are two mylar caps that, I don't know if you can see it, it's not very visible. 102, <clears throat> 102 is 0 0.001. The 0 0.001 is 1,000 picofarad. We've got two caps here doubled here and i've done for you know the example instead of two mylar caps we got 2.001 disc caps here and we basically we have 2000 picofarad so where we're supposed to have a 125 picofarad capacitor we have 2000 picofarad so we have way too much capacitance here and I'm thinking what happened here, we got a 0 0.005, 0 0.005 mic cap, and that is where the 5,000 uh, picofarad goes that is correct but the rest of them are way too high and i think that's our problem here okay after studying this circuit a little bit i think i see what's going on here you've got a 220 picofarad cap here that connects to the if can here and then goes through this 3.3 mag resistor, which goes back to the first IF can and over here to the tuning cap, which I, the 3.3 mag resistor is right there. And what, it, what, what he's done here is he's taken these 2.001 caps, which are, you know, the equivalent to a thousand picofarad each and put them in place of that 220 so what he thought he was going to do was he probably thought that these caps were 100 picofarads each and they're not they're 1000 picofarads so we've got the wrong capacitors in here and the way all this is laid out i may be better off just to build my own uh couplet out of my own resistors which you know in my own parts i've got those here I'm going to see if I can find some of these picofarad values. I don't know. We'll probably use some disc caps or something. I'll have to see what I've got around here. Okay, I'm kind of looking at this whole setup here. Scratching my head in a lot of ways, but trying to, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're trying to come back in and figure out what somebody's done, it's kind of hard. So... You know, it's kind of what really slows the work down is, you know, trying to figure out what somebody's done. And so this, uh, what is it, a 6.8 6 meg resistor here. I'm trying to get my mind in focus. Um, uh, that, you know, that hookup, I checked this because this is actually supposed to be in the couplet. It's... In the schematic it has it there and it's inside the dotted box so it's supposed to be in the couplet but somebody put this here and I couldn't figure out why they didn't put it in here but you know they decided to put it down here which I mean you know electronically is fine but you know I'm trying to figure out okay well where does this where does this go back in because this is supposed to hook into a into a, a 5000 picofarad or 0 0.005 capacitor um 
here you got the 0.68 and it goes in and it couples into uh you know this 0.5 and goes to the volume control and that was not even put in there that i can tell unless that's it there's a a disc capacitor here and a that somebody put in at the volume control and so let me see that is yeah okay so that's see this is what I'm talking about when people spread parts out all over the radio you don't know what they've done and so this is hooked into the volume control right here that black wire runs up to i guess I, i'm assuming it runs to that capacitor yeah so that's in the circuit so i guess that's okay so i don't have to worry about putting that in there but you know i'm trying to figure out what they did here and you know i guess this that is supposed to be that you know so anyway um yeah, we'll we'll just have to get it figured out. I mean, but these all these mylar caps have got to come out of here. Kentucky's governor with an update late this afternoon. Today we lost eleven additional Kentuckians. Well, it ain't. Uh, it don't sound great, but it's uh, it's actually got sound, so <laughs> that's not bad. Um, yeah, we still got work to do, but I got that couplet finished and got all this mess out of there and basically just run the components point to point you know like it was built in the radio and you know well i don't know i'll have to get on this tomorrow okay well we got what i did was i went by the schematic and rebuilt this couplet or the the components rather that were in the couplet and what i do instead of just building a couplet unit that fit down in this hole like he had i just integrated the circuits in the radio at each component so you know we have cap here cap here resistors the 470 resistors that coupling cap that couples the uh first audio to the to the you know main audio output tube the 50C5 from the 12AV6 to the uh, 50C5. Uh, these uh, resistors are hooked up in here. They had these, well, they had uh, two 250, well, it says, let's see what it says here. 250 picofarad, basically, total between these two here, um, which is, 125 the only thing i have are 150s so i put some 150s uh, parallel to the 470 like they've got in the in the couplet uh, the original couplet here so these are in parallel to these 470s here that's not focusing very well but you got 470s and you got uh these two caps here in parallel with each of these 470s so that's basically what we did here and here here and here and anyway this 6.8 meg here uh he had already put that in there and so that's still there and um this uh this here is this cap the 220 picofarad so that's a 221 that's close enough that's one picofarad so it's definitely not going to make any difference so you know that's in there and uh this 0 0.05 which is 5000 picofarad he already put that in there on the volume control. That would be this cap here. So that's already in there. Just left that as is. And, you know, this thing's real. This is one of these radios that's really finicky about the antenna. 
and I was getting squealing and and um, a lot of hum and all that in the in the uh, in the audio uh, uh, with this I, I hooked a loop antenna up that I this is the loop antenna that I've got he sent one in and I, I'll try that one too but it's probably not gonna make a whole lot of difference but when you hook that up you get a lot of squealing and motor boating and um, you know you get it's a lot of hum and a lot of distortion on the signal and that's because of the antenna once you hook a ferrite bar antenna up or the ferrite bar that was in with the radio it doesn't receive as well but it uh cuts out all that squealing and motor boating and you know there's a few things that i did to this set um there's a few resistors that were out of tolerance i replaced those um this is a 3.3 mag here it was uh, about 4.5 so i've replaced that and um there's probably a few other ones in here that need to be replaced but you know i'll let him do that i'm not going to put any more time in this radio um that, that's simple stuff he can replace if he's got an ohm meter he can check those and replace them they're very cheap the main thing he wanted it was to get it playing, so we have done that. Uh, we rebuilt the couplet or the components in the couplet and have got that all squared away, and it sounds fine with the ferrite bar antenna. Um, I can only pick up my local stations here. This is not going to be a DX or anything like that. This antenna is in pretty bad shape, and I mean, I ohmed it out. It seems to ohm out okay, but um, you know, from at least where I connected the wire here i'm not real sure if that's where the original wire goes or not um it had a the lead that's on this side was had a little piece of wire that was broke off on it so i'm assuming that that broke off somewhere in the windings here and i may not have that connected on the right spot i'm i put this under a magnifying glass and i couldn't see where the break came from so i just attached it where somebody had tinned some solder up over here on this side here somebody had tinned some solder up or tinned a wire of the winding over there so i just attached it back where it's at and it, it seems to play fine so we're just going to kind of leave this at that um you know this uh, it is what it is this this, this radio is kind of uh pretty rough and he's done a lot of work to it um and i really don't have the time to go back and go through all the circuits and see what's been done and what hasn't been done i've kind of you know skimmed over the schematic and gotten an idea but i think the main thing is he wanted to get it playing and figured out what was wrong with it and basically it ended up being the wrong value capacitors were used in the in the couplet circuit that he had um I'm going to send that back with the radio, his parts, and I put all my new parts in. Uh, and it's hooked up the way it's supposed to on the schematic, and I, we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, I'll uh, demonstrate this thing sounds good and, you know, on this ferrite, and uh, we'll just kind of leave it at that. Cable operation, a channel, and they put on news program i've got this, Trump is part my long that. wire kind of capacitively coupled from his uh real estate empire or you're not going to do that but he can appear on this new channel and maybe have a show because he loves his spot That's 970, about 45 miles away. And there's no squealing or anything on it, so... I think the main thing is to get a better antenna. 
slimmest of margins Georgia. Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey says he still believes President Trump has a path to victory in his state. The Republican told the Today Show... That's just that. It's probably a lot of that's probably coming from the light. Or animals. So please request a free estate planning package at deltarescue.org forward slash bill. For a limited time, you can watch The Rescuer. It's free only at deltarescue.org forward slash bill. The Rescuer is an award-winning documentary about... All right, it's during the daytime, so it's not going to be any DX or anything coming in, but those are... The local stations is picking up, and it sounds okay. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. He just wanted to get it working, so there you have it. Thanks for watching.